curve the cube will now initiate. Hey guys, this is Jimmy. Welcome to the 105th episode of the Curve the Cube podcast. This is another solo cast, yay! So it's just going to be me on this recording, for the most part, um, because at the end you'll hear a little bit of a presentation that I did. It was really, really exciting. There may be um, audience members in the background or something like that that you pick up, but for the most part, it's shall be moi. <laughs> I was um, invited to present earlier this week at a Center for Autism and Related Disabilities uh, career day at Florida Atlantic University. And it was pretty awesome, guys. It was my first public speaking event and it was so, so cool. Um, I was in a really impressive company too. So thank you to Darius of um, Card for inviting me. I mean, it was just total, totally a, an epic, epic honor. Um, you know, like I said, I was in such a prestigious company. We had an environmentalist, a, an event planner, a comic book illustrator, online, uh, this guy who, who created this online social community for the disabled, a police officer. So what was great was there were so many people who took their time out of, out of their day pursuing their own dreams and their own ambitions to come share their, their stories and present. So it was wonderful, great, great group, but it also meant I only got about 10 minutes. <laughs> and anybody who's a fan of the podcast knows that um, I can kind of talk when I want to, right? So uh, I had to kind of rush through some of my thoughts here, thoughts there. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to record this podcast and really flesh out what I had to say in my presentation. So I'll include the actual presentation at the end. Um, we'll also including a downloadable PDF of my presentation for you guys. So if you guys wanted to see what was on the screen, um, those, there's a download that you can just click and get. So it's very, very awesome. But yeah, so this is the story of how I got here. Essentially, um, and I wasn't really sure when I was asked to present what I would talk about, and I thought the story of how I got here was would be really appropriate because um, the message of helping others get out how they pursued their dream has in itself become the dream for me. So um, how I got here is really the story about curving my own cube. So I basically started off by talking that explaining that yes I'm a digital marketer and yes I'm a, I'm a podcaster and also asking the, <laughs> the audience um, how many people have even heard of podcasting because you'd be surprised how many people still haven't heard about it and um, so it's always exciting for me to have the opportunity to introduce a, a new audience to what podcasting is um, but basically I, I talk about how in my childhood I was always a I'm, well, still, I'm a big kid at heart. Um, you know, if you come with me to a Comic-Con or other such festival, you'll see firsthand that I am definitely a big kid at heart. Or hang out with me and my son for Lego nights or whatever. Um, and as a kid, I was also a very, very big dreamer, as most kids are. I'm sure that you had some big, big dreams when you were a kid as well. I know that for me, you know, anything from, you know, I'd watch a TV show and learn about archaeology or an ancient ruins or dinosaurs, and I was like, oh, that's, that's what I want to be. I want to be an archaeologist, and I ran out and I read Jurassic Park, and I loved it. Um, you know, I, so that, those are the kind of the sources of my, some of my dreams, books, movies, TV shows, all that stuff. And, you know, I thought about maybe I'll be a writer. I've always had a lot of poetry and stories living in my brain that, um, you know, that could still happen. I have so many stories I could, I could tell and <laughs> some children's stories, some more appropriate only for adults, but who knows, maybe I'll sit down and actually um, really become a writer one day still. I also thought about becoming an actress, you know, stage actress or film or movies or television or something like that. And um, really getting out there and busting a move and, 
you know, clearly I'm not, I'm not shy in front of people. And I thought this would be a fun way to, um, also express some stories, do some storytelling through some acting. So there's kind of a common thread here, right? Archaeology is the story of history. Writing is the story of whatever comes in your imagination and acting is the story of whatever's come out of someone else's imagination. Um, and then also I thought about maybe I'll become a race car driver because it's actually funny when I was really little, I'll never forget. My brother asked me one day, you know, if I was excited about growing up and learning how to drive. And actually the, the idea of it was pretty terrifying to me because I thought that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> I'm responsible for my own life, the life of anybody else in my car and the life of anybody else on the road. I don't know why I was so scared of it because everything changed once I actually began got behind the wheel and I fell in love with it and in part that may or may not have been part of my motivation in college for becoming an EMT because you pretty much get carte blanche to <laughs> drive your ambulance as fast as you want through the mean streets of New Orleans where I where I worked and and you know obviously I, I took extra care when I had a patient but getting there getting there was another story you know slam on, on, on that accelerator and, and go and you get to turn on your flashing lights and your sirens and wait wait for the clear the clear to, from everybody else on the road but you can go through red lights oh my gosh so much fun <laughs> and I was always really good at driving you know never been in an accident or anything so race car driver was always something I thought would be super fun but in the end, I settled on my love of computers because it was much um, more of a safe road, I guess you could say, something that you could really like plan out on a map almost for your career. You know, you could decide, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to study this, at the end of it, I'm going to graduate, I'm going to get this kind of job, uh, there are these kind of levels and stages, and it's, it's something very predictable, and I loved it. I loved not necessarily the predictability of it, that was nice and felt safe, but more of, um, from a creative aspect, you know, you could go into uh, a report and you could create, which is what I am doing, analytics and reporting. And you can take what a manager really wanted you to do, and you can take their general concept and create, you know, a bunch of code and go into the databases and pull out all this stuff. And in the end, you took all these puzzle pieces and you made it work and you created a really, really solid report. So I kind of liked that too. Actually, I liked it more than kind of. I liked it a lot. Um, but after about 10 or 15 years of it, it became very mundane and was no longer at all exciting for me. Um, it turned from generating, creating reports and being able to really use my imagination to troubleshooting and searching for errors and other people's code and look at, you know, it really is just a, a practice of looking for a needle in a haystack and ugh lost its luster for me and <laughs> not like it anymore. And going to work became just that. It became work. I, I lost all passion for it. So plus, um, for me, I had a tough time dealing with a lot of the politics of corporate America. You know, there's something very cattle herdy about walking into an office, having to swipe your car to let upper management know you're there, looking at the, the, the ocean of cubicles that all look the same, um, you know, dress codes, blah, blah, blah. Like it just never quite worked for me. So I was unhappy in, in a lot of ways, but I loved the paycheck. I loved it. That's always a good thing, right? So I had, um, you know, day by day, I made a decision went up, got up, went to work, um, and did what I was expected to do and what I prepared to do. But it just wasn't making me very happy anymore. So, you know, on the side, I decided to just do some other fun things, and I discovered the world of blogging and social media. And it's funny, looking at me today, you might not necessarily believe it, but back in, like, 2008, um... I started this this online website thing. It was really just a Facebook page as a way to keep myself accountable for my own weight loss. Um, I had experienced a physical trauma about ten year uh, about eight years prior that kept me from 
being healthy and exercising. And through that, um, I gained a lot of, lot, a lot of weight. I became very sedentary. Um, and so once I was clear to start working all of that out, literally, um, I figured the best way to hold myself accountable was through Facebook page. And I would post every day what I was, you know, kind of what I was eating and what I was, ex how I was exercising, um, what my progress was and eventually turned it into like a daily tip and started helping others as I gained success. And it kind of started this engine for me where, um, I really loved helping other people, um, on their own weight loss journeys and their own journeys through fitness. And it became profound because people were reaching out to me from as far away as Australia to help them. And I realized the power of blogging, the power of social media, the power of the online presence and what it can really, really do. So as I kind of eventually translated that into some consulting on the side for businesses and, and, and people who are in the public spotlight to help them figure out what does their online presence look like and how can I help them with their branding and ultimately with telling their story, right? That kind of goes back to my love of archaeology and of being on stage and all of that because what I really loved about it was telling people's stories either sharing their weight loss journeys through what was called health gems, by the way, health, J-E-M-S, I think you can still look it up, um, versus um, branding and telling people's branded stories. And But it was still something I did on the side. It was very digital marketing focused, and so I loved it. I got to be creative. I got to start and, and, and figure out a puzzle for somebody and what those pieces are going to be and create a strategy and really be creative with it. And I, I kind of got myself back to square one where I felt in the analytics part of my career and tap back into that creativity that I loved using so much. Um, but <laughs> at the same time, I also couldn't quite get out of the pattern of, um, always tying what I did back to analytics and um, the thing that I didn't quite love anymore. So what I was doing <laughs> was um, I was creating, for example, a social media campaign for a company and doing all of that and then analyzing it on the back end, which is a very good sound practice. I still do it to this day for my clients, but it was again my safe zone. I was worried about a little bit of the front end with the campaign management. And then on the back end, I was really excited about all the analytics and fun stuff I got to show with the charts and the graphs and the spreadsheets and the things. But then I delivered it to the client and I was still just focusing on analytics, like return of investment, cost per click, um, all of these wonderful measurements that can really help a marketing campaign drive drive its success but because of just feeling comfortable in my analytics career i just always geared it back towards analytics in other words analytics remained remained the thing and the marketing became just kind of the outer shell of it so i still wasn't fully focused on marketing because i still felt comfortable and safe um doing my analytics career but then something very curious happened in 2014. My favorite radio show called the KVJ show, which is on 97.9 WRMF, it was um, being taken off the air. It's now on 97.9 WRMF, but previously it was on another radio station. And then it got basically bought out by another radio station. And that other one, which whose name I will never mention on air, um, they started dismantling the show, and this is a show that I've been a fan of. I mean, it basically gave me my daily dose of sanity um, by being insane every morning um, on my drive to work. And I would listen to it in headphones during the day, and it really was a joy. So as it started being dismantled, I was really pissed off. And um, basically what I did was I started tweeting a little bit and using some of those 
online marketing skills that I I've been tweaking on the side and started um, bolding a, boldening a coalition right, of fellow fans of the show. <clears throat> And this uh, one girl named Carla was amazing because she jumped right on board right away and, um, and, and created a, the Facebook page for it. So between myself on Twitter, herself on Facebook, our joint strategies and efforts, um, we really worked hard and managed to get thousands of people who were fans of the show to back our efforts and our campaign and create one unified unified voice online. I mean, whoa. <laughs> it started from, you know, really I just asked people to call the show, email upper management, um, use your voices, tell them, hey, we're not really happy with these changes. Please change the show back. And it started very amicable and peaceful and we were ignored. And so people started getting really, really riled up. Um, blasting their their social media pages and creating uh, I think I put out a an open letter and all this stuff so our voices eventually really got lifted up and then I started doing some more creative things um, ways of, of joining the uh, other people's efforts and I started reaching out to local news organizations both television and um, television shows and, and and television news outlets and letting them know what's going on and what we're trying to do and trying to get our story out there. So I started getting a, more of a public buzz. We got a, uh, the story out on WPTV, News Channel 5. Thank you so much for that. Um, um, we started getting... Uh, Carla and I have got invited onto a show called The List, um, which Ashley Porter interviewed us about our efforts for to get the show back on the air. And... At some point during the campaign, the show actually got kicked off. So it was really tough because I constantly had to reshift the strategy depending on what the reaction was that we were getting. It was this balance between not wanting to get the show itself in trouble um, with also wanting to make sure our voices and what we wanted was heard and really, really trying to push to affect change. So it was tough. It was a tough balancing act. And... Um, so, uh, you know, it, it got, there were some sticky and dicey moments there. I remember at one point there was rumor that one of the spouses of, of the host of the show was, was the ones that were, they were behind the scenes causing all this trouble and everything else. And, um, another radio station ran the radio show, started talking about them online. And so then I, uh, thankfully, um, they allowed me to come on as a guest to kind of, clear the air and, and talk publicly about it and openly about it. And it really was this amazing um, spectacle to watch, uh, to watch an effort of a public group really pull their voices together um, and their talents too. So that was another part of it was learning the strategy. Okay, so all these people are willing to help. They have different talents. Let's see if we can pull, pull in their different talents. So um, we had for example, my buddy Scotty Fusion creating amazing, amazing graphics for the campaign. We had um, my buddy Jay, uh, Jay Centron, also known as Captain KVJ, because he created that moniker and that character as a superhero for the campaign and the show during the course of it. Um, now, you may also recognize Scotty Fusion and Jay Centron as my pod squad buddies, so look for those episodes as well, a little bit of a, of a side note. Um, uh, and they've also been on individually. I can't. I can't help but note that as well. But my point is that it was there was so much to the campaign from um, different strategies involving graphics, involving um, television, and, and other radio spots that I, I managed to finagle myself into um, through hashtags. You know, the hashtag KVJ Nation or hashtag Save the KVJ Show. All of these efforts. Um, was a really amazing experience for me on a, a learning stage because it was a, a public learning experience for me. Um, I really learned how to strategize, how to create a brand, how to build a brand, and how to um, pull in other people's talents and really make something great. 
we were a solid unit. Everyone there was super energized, and I can't thank that group enough, but I absolutely, absolutely loved it. And in the end, this campaign was successful, and that is the bottom line. It was a success, and we, the show, um, the hosts, ourselves, the, the fans, the KBJ Nation, all together, um, the effort ended up with the show being on WRMF, which is 97.9, um, weekday mornings from 6 to 10, and we could not have been happier. In fact, um, you'll hear a little clip later, I was invited along with a bunch of others into the studio on their relaunch on WRMF and got to speak on air. It was really, really amazing, but it, what it did was it changed the trajectory of, of my career and my outlook and what I wanted to do. And I realized I had this talent of, of motivating others, this talent of uh, creating great branding stories and content. And um, that was another fun thing I did was I dug into every outlet I could find and pulled in content from the show so that while they were on this like six or about a six month gap where there was no show, maybe not quite that long, but felt like it. Um, so I was constantly churning out their old content to keep their fans happy and energized. So anyway, it was really, <laughs> really this amazing journey that I was on. And it was hard. It was so hard, guys. There were times where I was in absolute tears, but it was all worth it. And in the end, I realized how much I loved doing that. I feel like I made a difference, um, maybe in a small way, but I made a difference and I was really excited about it. So I decided I really wanted to focus on online marketing and figure out how can I make this a career and shift away from analytics into fully doing marketing. So it was still as the campaign was going on actually uh, that I founded Flintstone Media and decided to kind of see where it was going to go and focus on, on more online campaigns, social media, websites all of that fun stuff. And it really allowed me to let my creativity shine again. So <clears throat> I was focusing more on the design aspect of websites, but then also learning more of the development and creating really solid websites, focusing more on learning SEO, which is search engine optimization, which is really important, it turns out, when you're building a website. So I learned all about that. Um, I honed my skills on developing, creating logos and other graphics and all the f those other creative elements that go into um, solid media campaigns. And I started learning how to do video production. Um, and I started doing, so what, what was great was by creating my own company, little tip guys, when you create your own company, your own venture, what it allows you to do is figure out all these other skills that you can also learn. So in creating a company, I learned, in my company, I learned how to do video production. I learned how to do logos and graphic work. I learned how to do um, SEO, and but also learned how to just start a company. What is that process all about? Um, what is the process of, uh, through, through, creating Flintstone Media and, you know, I didn't outsource how to build a website for it. I built it myself. I didn't outsource how to create the graphics for it. I created the graphics myself. So Flintstone Media, it's an ongoing learning lesson, an opportunity for me to hone all these skills that I am in turn also providing to clients. So it's been really great. Flintstone Media has been so much fun for me. I can't even express. And once I jumped ship in August of 2016, it became an official thing that I was now a marketer and I couldn't have, I couldn't have been happier. <laughs> um, so then I also want to, wanted to share in my presentation at, at FAU about not only how I got into digital marketing, um, when the story of the KBJ show and all of that, but also how I became a podcaster specifically. So <clears throat> as the idea started germinating about um, forming Flintstone Media and as I, as I created the company and it, it was getting off, off its feet and I was really, really, really enjoying it and I found myself, my, my brain space much more focused on that during the day than the actual job that I was sitting in a cubicle doing as far as analytics was, 
um, what dawned on me was I was really passionate about marketing and not really passionate about analytics. And I felt really good that I was putting all this time and effort into building something I was more passionate about. And this thought dawned on me that I don't want to say I wasted my time. I didn't waste any time uh, learning analytics and, and going to college and all this stuff. That's not at all what this is because certainly everything, everything has contributed to where I am today. But I do feel like I didn't spend enough time really focusing on what I really truly was passionate about and wanted to do before I just hit the ground running on a career. And there are a part of that was a fear of failure, a feel, fear of going for something I really, really, truly wanted to do that is less predictable and then failing at it. Um, and how would I support myself? How would I grow family or et cetera, et cetera. So as I was sitting in my, at my desk one day at my analytics job and thinking about all this stuff, I realized a lot of other people are having those thoughts too. And I certainly, I felt like I was in a room full of them. And, and I also had this competing thought of, well, somebody is out there making it, doing what they really love. Um, and now, again, it may not be a full-time thing. It may be part-time. It may be just a hobby, but there are people who are really, truly doing what they love, as I felt I was now doing in what was kind of like a pseudo-hobby with Flintstone Media at the time. But I wanted to inspire more people to not be afraid to to grab the bull by the horns and do something they love. So I was sitting there thinking about all this one day, and it dawned on me, and I talk about this a little bit in um, my, my birthday episode, which I think was episode like 94 or something like that. If you rewind, you'll find it. But, you know, it dawned on me, like, I, what I really need to do is ask pe other people how they are doing what they really love and then share those stories with others and inspire others. But how do I do that? Um, and what was funny is I was thinking about all this and the, the answer was right in front of my face or actually right in the middle of my ear, well, not in my brain, in my ears, in my earbuds, because as I was thinking about this and ruminating, um, I was listening to a podcast. Shout out to Nerdist. I'm a huge fan of Nerdist Industries, Chris Hardwick, um, President Adam Reimer. He's actually been on the show. Uh, I think it was episode like 16 or something. Um, huge fan of Nerdist. And I was listening to, to a podcast and it dawned on me, duh, just start a podcast. Talk to these people that are doing passionate things and, and put it out there for the world to hear and be inspired by. And so that became my passion project to inspire people out of their own, out of their own ruts. And in the meantime, also collect little tips and know-how from other people who are doing it to kind of demystify the whole process. So if someone is sitting there and they want to become a writer, um, it can be daunting to think about putting yourself out there to become a writer, submitting yourself to publishers, the fear of rejection, or the fear of just starting it and not finishing it, or of telling people, I'm writing a book, and then three years later, you haven't gotten very far, and being embarrassed. So all these reasons that we get into our own heads about why we shouldn't do X, Y, and Z. So how how have um, how have other people done, done it? And really sharing these stories has become a passion project for me, because it's, it's it's I want to chip away from all those fears and objections that we put in front of ourselves. And so as I started to do that, I formed the idea for Curve the Cube, because it's I was sitting in a cubicle and I wanted to break out of it. Um, but I also wanted my message to be a little bit more responsible than just burn the house down and walk out and um, say, I'm doing what I want for a living, screw you. Um, yeah, that's not going to pay the bills. It's not going to get you <laughs> very far. So I didn't want that to be <laughs> my message. So rather than curbing the cube and th throwing caution to the wind, just curve it a little figure way around, way around problems and, and, and how to get to the solution of doing what you really want. So that has become the Curve the Key Passion Project and was the idea that germinated 
And I thought, how do, who is the first person I should ask to be on the show? Well, I thought back to my time working very, very hard for the KVJ show campaign and thought, why don't I invite the K, also known as Kevin Ralston, on. So I went to a KVJ event um, uh, at Dirty Martini where he was hosting and talked to him and asked, I told him my idea and I said, hey, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, any chance you would be my pilot guest? <laughs> he said, yes. And I was so excited and it was great. And so I met him up at his, at his radio station, um, hung out for the show. And then afterwards we went into his office and I set up and I got the crappiest little mic you've ever seen and had terrible audio. I overprepared, <laughs> um, as far as questions were concerned, underprepared as far as my nerves were concerned. And so the show is really clunky. Is a really, honestly kind of terrible episode. Go back and listen to episode one. <laughs> That's really, I listened back to it and I forgive myself a lot on that episode, but, um, it was a great first dive and, and, um, also a great example. And, you know, sometimes when you want to do something, you just have to put one foot in front of the other and let everything else just kind of figure itself out. Right. And by doing so, I've had guests now who have been incredible from entrepreneurs to faith leaders to, um, my friend Jen, who creates amazing little fuzzy animals out of yarn and stuff, like out of wool, um, to actors, uh, and, and writers and producers, every, I mean, it's, it's run the gamut and, you know, my, my guests have been unbelievably inspiring and have done exactly what I've asked of them, which is to motivate and inspire others. And they've been so open and it's been a wild ride. And man, let me tell you. So thinking back to when I was that little girl, that big dreamer, um, and thinking about what I was going to be when I grow up. And I mean, the sky's the limit is when you have the imagination of a kid, right? And this one movie that I loved when I was little was called The Never Ending Story. I hope you guys have heard of it. If not, do yourself a solid. Go out and rent it or stream it, whatever. Find it and watch it. But then watch it again because it's really solid. It's so good. But essentially what the movie is about, it's about this little boy. And he starts reading this book. And the book takes him on an adventure. And what the movie was for me and was um, a real testament about the power of imagination and about how you should never stop pursuing your dreams and believing in yourself and wanting to do what you dream. And that, that message has, that has planted a seed in me, in my heart, in my brain, in my soul that has carried me through life. And as I've been working on curve the cube and bring these other people's stories to life, it really made me think back to that movie and how instrumental it was and my belief that, uh, that people really need to do what they're passionate about and always keep dreaming. So my, su how surprised I was on Facebook one day when there was an ad for a special screening of never ending story in select theaters one of which was right by me. So I grabbed my kid by the hand and got us tickets to two different shows. And I saw it, we saw it twice, which I'd never gotten to see on the big screen. And it was powerful for me um, to, to, to see to, and recall how much this movie meant to me and to look at my, the face of my child and how his imagination was now being spurned by it. So let me tell you guys, it was a absolutely quintessential moment for me to have the hundredth episode of Curve the Cube feature an actress from the never ending story, Tammy Stronach. She was fantastic. And we talked a lot about exactly this, 
the importance of doing what you're passionate about. So please listen back to episode 100 if you've missed it, because it's there's some really amazing nuggets in there. So thank you, Tammy, for that. But my point is that Curve the Cube has been the journey as much as it's been the destination. And it's been so, so much fun for me. And what was also really exciting is, so the guy who invited me to do this career day presentation, his name is Darius Murray. He is um, in charge of the card. He works at the card, uh, the card um, <laughs> organization at FAU. And he helps pair mentors with uh, people on the autism spectrum. And he does such amazing, such amazing work. And he actually was on my episode, episode number 75. We met up at a Comic-Con. Um, and he came up on the show, did a fantastic job. So it was really fun in the midst of this presentation I was giving for a bunch of people who know him personally and have been on the other side of his work. Um, to be able to share with them a tie-in between his work and my work and play a little clip of his episode, um, which you'll hear um, later in the presentation itself. So it was really, really a fun a fun tie-in to show how things have just come really full circle with the podcast and how through during, doing Curve the Cube and asking people about their dreams and their passions and their and their journeys podcasting has become such a passion for me because I realize what a powerful vehicle it is as I've explored other podcasts. I mean, there are podcasts out there that do storytelling that really are akin to those old days in like, I don't know, the teens and twenties maybe where people were gathered around these big radios and um, there was storytelling and it was all about the, the sound effects and the clippity clops to make sounds like sound like someone was entering the room and the slamming of the door and all that fun stuff. And so there, people are doing that now, like a modern day version of that with podcasting. So they're those type of podcasts. They're podcasts that talk about, I don't know, I'm kind of breaking a cardinal rule here a little bit with talking about other people's podcasts, but I don't care. I love it so much. They're podcasts that talk about, they're just interview podcasts like mine that might be based on a different particular topic, like business. Like my friend, uh, Jeremy Pound, he has a podcast where he interviews other entrepreneurs, um, specifically talking about marketing and, um, and it's a really amazing focused niche podcast. And, you know, so there are different types of podcasts out there. Um, and I encourage sometimes, sometimes they're guested. Sometimes some podcasts are exclusively like this one. This episode is, and it's just one person talking, but there, there's so many different kinds out there. And as I listened to and discovered more, um, and kept doing curve the cube, I realized what a powerful vehicle podcasting is you know, anybody can do it, um, and get their message out. It can be great for marketing a company brand. It can be great for just voicing your opinions on something. It can be great just as a hobby, a fun thing, you know, to find your other like-minded individuals. Let's say you love talking about Star Trek, um, and maybe cartoons. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so I'm sure there's a podcast out there that does just that. So I loved it. And so podcasting has since become the dream itself for me. As much as I love digital marketing, I've discovered this other adjunct passion for myself. And my goal has now been to become kind of the podcast girl of Palm Beach County where I live. And I hope that I do enough work and I work hard enough and create enough of a podcast community down here that the word of mouth is that if someone wants to start a podcast, Jemmy's the girl to go to and she can help you on your way because that's what I would love to do. I would love to create a solid podcast community down here. And that's, that's my next goal. That's my next focus point. So, you know, I've created the Flintstone Media Podcast Network, and I'm working to start other shows. So not only do I have Kurt the Cube, but I also have um, the Eggheads After Hours podcast, which is a podcast where my friends and I are both a bunch of tech nerds, and we talk about um, technology and how we use it in our community. And it, it's, it's a super solid podcast, definitely geared more towards technology and, and business. And it's a lot of fun. So Eggheads After Hours is part is a second podcast that I co-host. 
and there are other podcasts that I'm just helping to support. And like Trill Tummies is coming up with a podcast. Uh, St. Joe's Unplugged is coming up with a podcast. A couple other ones out there. Then also, and that's specifically part of the Flint Media Podcast Network, but also there's Palm Beach Podcasters, which is a meetup group that um, I was on meetup one day. And I'm like, you know what? I bet you there's a podcast meetup group in here on here somewhere. And there was, there were two. Now, one of them takes place further south. And I just could never work it out in my schedule to ever attend an event. It was really frustrating and sad for me, but it was still a goal to go. But then there was this other group that called the Palm Beach Podcasters. I was like, well, great. That sounds really close. Should be easy. Click to join. And then this red banner came up saying, this podcast will be just podcast group, meetup group, will be discontinued in the next 24 hours if it does not acquire an organizer. <laughs> in other words, meetup was about to kill the podcast group that I just joined. No! So I signed up to become the organizer, and it was really just a safety net. I didn't want it to fall off the cliff, right? But I didn't imagine that I would be the one leading it. And then months later, I thought, why am I not the one leading it if it's not doing anything? So I decided to do that and I relaunched it and I've met with some amazing fellow podcasters or people interested in podcasting and we're now this supportive group. We've only had a couple of meetings, but um, there's another one coming up on the 13th. So if you're in the Palm Beach County area, go to um, palmbeachpodcasters.com and find the next meetup group, not meeting, and join the group and uh, become a podcaster with me or just come out and meet meet me and meet the other others of us and you know we shared some really great ideas uh, about podcasting and marketing and content and it's just a fun fun group and so for me to be at the helm of of this thing called palm beach podcasters and this other thing called flintstone media podcast network and to have two podcasts now that i've i'm co-hosting and producing and it's and to help these other podcasters get off the ground man what a passion this has become for me I know I say that word a lot but it's true it just it means everything to me I absolutely absolutely have loved it loved it loved it loved it loved it, loved it. so <laughs> in conclusion now when I was doing the presentation like I said at the beginning, I only had about 10 minutes, so I really had to rush through it. And I didn't get to um, flesh out um, a lot of this stuff that I've gotten now to flesh out. But I also didn't get to flesh out, the, I didn't even get to, the conclusion, the last couple slides, which I think are critically important. Because, like I was saying, my message is important, but it needs to be also responsible, right? Don't burn the house down and walk out and just say, screw, screw you guys, I'm going home. Like Cartman was my best Cartman impression, I apologize. But it also set yourself up to do, to really put in the work. So in my case, um, you know, there was a long time there, almost about a year, where I was pulling double duty. I had my day job as an analyst, and then I had this Flintstone Media business that I was trying to grow and I didn't leave one until the other one I thought was well enough off the ground. Um, it's still been tough financially. It's been really, really tricky and I'm so grateful for everyone who's been there, supported me um, in a variety of ways that my friends and family have supported me. But in the end, the weight has all been on my shoulders. This is a one-woman show, and I've needed to be prepared for the responsibility of that. So you need to be as well. You need to make sure that you really figure out what you're passionate about. That's step one. So brainstorm. Think of different things that you love to do. Maybe journal for about a month. What is it that you found yourself binge-watching on television? What is it that you've uh, found yourself gone in, getting into a just a, a random tunnel on with uh, YouTube or or on Facebook? What did you just follow the trail on um, one click after another because you couldn't get enough? What is it that when you are in your quiet time you find yourself daydreaming about? 
think about when you were a kid what you found yourself daydreaming about what is it that you really want to do when you're a kid no matter how crazy or ludicrous the the thought was is right so you may have thought i want to be a flying gymnast who um also cures cancer well guess what you can be that <laughs> Or at least a version of that, right? You can be one of those um, cliff divers who ends up supporting a cause that is raising money for cancer research. I don't know, but that's an example of how something completely random, these completely random things, come together and you can figure out what is a pattern that can actually be something I look into? So it still sounds very fantastic to say I'm going to be a cliff diver that raises money for cancer research, right? But there are people who are doing that type of a thing. There are people who are who are jumping out of planes or cliff diving or whatever and raising money for, for, for campaigns. So it's really not that far-fetched. You just have to figure out what it is that you're passionate about and then try to put in the work and the research to do it. So don't be afraid of it. Demystify it for yourself because that's what's gonna chop off and, and get rid of a lot of those fears is changing the unknown into the unknown. And it's aligned with that, <clears throat> also find yourself a good mentor, a good support group, somebody who's done it ahead of you, whether that's just a book that you find in a shelf or a podcast that you can find of someone who talks about how they've done it before, hint, hint, curve, cube, or um, a person in online or in the flesh who will meet with you and talk to you and help you through, navigate whatever questions you might have. I have um, a wonderful support group of friends um, who aren't necessarily podcasters. Some are marketers, some are content creators, some are actors, but they all are doing something that they love and when we get together we realize we have certain common um, obstacles that we all need to uh, overcome and we end up creating great ideas for one another so I highly encourage you create a support group for whatever it is that you're trying to do um, and and reach out to other like-minded individuals so do it responsibly find out what you're passionate about and just hit the ground running be prepared to work extremely extremely hard like I said I at one point was pulling really double duty and I was exhausted there were times and I'm a single mom so Side note. So there were times when I would put my son to bed and he doesn't go to bed anytime early. So he'd fall asleep between like nine and 10. And then I would be fa probably falling asleep right along with him. Um, wake him up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom because he's potty training. He's four. And then, and then, well, at the time, probably two or three. And then um, after I put him back to bed, I'd be up for three, four hours getting stuff done for Flintstone Media and for Curve the Cube, and then going back to bed for an hour or two, and then waking up and going to my day job, and doing that, and trying to do as good a job as I could at that for eight hours, eight to 10 hours a day. So it's tough, it's really hard. Um, but just prepare yourself for that. But if you're passionate about it, it's really not hard. It's it's. I remember even nights when I was up really late, I had to force myself sometimes to go to sleep because I was loving what I was doing so much. I was energized to get it done and to tackle and to really build something, build something up. So do it responsibly, get a support group, work hard, and just don't stop. Just put one foot in front of the other and, and you will also get it done. So as I've journey through through here and found myself relaying this journey at this career day um you know i also wanted it's also a good side note a good cap if you will that at the end of this career day a moment where i was invited to do something and i went completely just wanting to share my story with others and inspire it ended up coming around and, and benefiting me directly as well because at the end of it I ended up having um, new contacts, a new network, and I've had meetings set up with other presenters who were there to talk about how to help them with their marketing. 
how to help them with their with starting a podcast. So, you know, if you are passionate about something and you put yourself out there and are doing it, then good things will just start to happen. It's it's really amazing. I mean, I've seen it time and time again, um, how I've put myself out there and good things have, have come back my way. And it's been really a great, a great journey. So I hope you've enjoyed, I know I've rambled a little bit, but it's, it's because I, I love, I love telling this story so much, you know, and, and, and encouraging others to find what they're really passionate about and what they really want to do in life. It's just such a passion for me. So I hope you don't mind the rambling, but <laughs> um, I hope it is inspiring you to just do the research and put one foot front, front, front in front of the other. Listen back to some of the episodes I've had with some of my guested episodes and hear other people's stories. You And if you have a particular interest and want to only listen to a particular series of episodes, let's say you want to be an actor or uh, you want to be a writer or you want to get into uh, be a reporter and get into newscasting, um, you can find those specific targeted categories um, on the website, curvethecube.com, and listen to those and really be inspired. Don't be afraid. Everybody here has on this planet has something that they were meant to do, and you are are no exception. So find that thing and pursue it and do what you dream. Find your passion, do your thing. This is Jemmy and I'm out. <laughs> Hello. How are you guys? <laughs> How are you guys? Good, 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 good. All right, so my name is Jemmy. Hello. It's like Jenny, but with M's. So Jenny. And um, I'm so glad to be here. So as I was uh, invited to come, I was a little confused as to exactly what I was going to talk about. I thought about it for a little while, right? And I figured the best thing that I can do to relate a career day message to you is just about how I got here myself. So that is what I decided to do. Is the clicker? All right. Okay. So a little bit about me. I am a digital marketer and a podcaster. How many people know what podcasting is? How many people have heard of it? A few? About half the room? Awesome! Okay, so for those of you who don't know what podcasting is, stay tuned. Get there. <laughs> Alright, so also I'm a Comic-Con lover. Has nothing to do with my presentation, but I thought you guys should know. <laughs> and in fact, that picture was taken. Darius, do you know what, what, when that picture was taken? Uh, about two years ago. When I... There you go! <laughs> Same exact day I met Darius. All right, so I'm a big kid at heart, and I've always been a big dreamer. So as I was little and thinking about what I wanted to be when I grew up, I had a great many ideas, right? Like the Wonder Years. The wonder years. <laughs> so I thought maybe I'll be an archaeologist. I like dinosaurs. I like getting dirty. Sounds, it seemed like a good fit. And then I thought maybe I'll be a writer. I have a lot of stories in my head, dying to get out. Maybe I will be a stage actress. Because I'm totally shy in front of people, obviously, right? A model? <laughs> Aw, that's so nice. Or maybe I'll be a race car driver. Like Christmas bot before she starts CrossFit. Well, there you go. And now a couple of these may still be in the cards, right? <laughs> but when I was little, what I really, something I really loved was computer. And I thought computers was a little bit more practical, right? That big keyword, practical. So what I did was I went to school, got a couple degrees in business and computers. And I fell into reporting and analytics because I loved it. I loved the puzzle pieces that go into coding something. Someone has a problem in management. They say, I need a report that does this. I go to IT. I said, what are the databases? And I write cool code, and it spits out what the manager needed. But that's pretty awesome. So I really liked it. But after about 10, 15 years of doing this, came a little bit mundane. And I thought, this isn't really what I want to do. So I started being a little more creative on the side. And I got into da, 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 blogging, social media, websites, all of that fun stuff. Like everything that basically has to do with digital marketing. But I still maintained it as like analytics focused, right? So I create a marketing campaign for somebody and then analyze it on the other end figure out what was their return on investment, what was their uh, digital marketing, like Google ads and stuff like that, Facebook ads, 
What was their cost per click? What was their click-through rate? All of that fun stuff. <laughs> fun for me, at least. Um, yeah, and, I, and I'm a huge spreadsheet nerd, so that was another really fun part of it for me, but I always brought it back to analytics. This was not as creative anymore as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and I was still kind of searching, right? Then, something very interesting happened in 2014. My very favorite radio show of all time. How many of you have heard of the KVJ show? It's on the mornings on 97.9. There are a couple people. Good. Good. All right, Kevin, Virginia, and Jason. Their show has been kicked off the air. I wasn't having it. <laughs> I love these guys. They were like family to me. I've met them a couple times. So they're more like family in my head, but I still really like them and I wanted to fight for them. So I launched an online campaign to get them back on, on the air. Now what was amazing is it worked. And they got back on the air. Now I want to play, I don't know, Darius, is there a mouse I can click? Okay. So on their relaunch, they invited me on the radio. The thing that was really kind of interesting, though, was there was one person that just kind of like cut through all the social media clutter. Her name is uh, Jemmy, and if you follow us on Twitter or on Facebook or anything like that, you've probably uh, seen her name pop up. Now, tell me a little bit, because you've actually been on TV. I know the list on uh, Channel 5. They've uh, featured you at least once, you and uh, Carla over there. How did you kind of like start this KVJ Nation crusade and movement? Well, for a diehard fan, it was easy to see the breakdown start to happen fairly early on. And as those changes became bigger and bigger, my discomfort level grew and grew. And I knew something had to be done. It was wonderful to see a KVJ Nation rise up. Because we weren't KVJ Nation before, but we are now. Yeah, and all yeah. this thing kind of happened. Yeah, I mean, and you actually become a really tight-knit group. It's like Braveheart up in here. I'm like, inspired. <laughs> I want to move a mountain. Oh, freedom! Yeah. So let me tell you guys, that was like the best day ever, <laughs> to be invited into the studio of the, yes, the people I'd looked up to and heard and listened to and been a huge fangirl of for so long. It was so awesome. So because of that, I thought, wait, wait, wait. oh, wait, 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 wait. hold on. To... Take a picture? Yeah. Okay. You just move forward to wait there? Yeah. there you go. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so I decided to take my digital marketing and online campaigning and all that a lot more seriously. And I decided to found my own company. So I founded Flintstone Media uh, in 2014. And with Flintstone Media, I continue to let my creativity shine. And it's a lot of fun. So I'm still doing social media, websites, and all of that. But now I'm doing less analytics work <laughs> and just focusing on the creativity and the design of websites and social media campaigns and the strategy behind them. And it was really cool because I was now a marketer. And that was supposed to come up and it didn't. I was now a marketer. <laughs> So I changed my career. I changed the trajectory of my life, and that was huge for me. So where does podcasting fit in, right? So as I felt this really satisfying feeling of now doing something I really loved, I was like, I want more people to do that. So what I decided to is embark on a passion project where I interview people who are doing really cool things to inspire and motivate others to do the same. And that passion project, was, well, first of all, so to explain what podcasting is a little bit more. Who has ever seen a movie, an old movie, where people are maybe sitting in front of a radio and listening to a show? Do you, okay. Like, a couple people. Exactly. So podcasting is somewhat the 20th or 21st century version of that. And now, with technology, you can listen to these shows right on your smartphones. It's pretty awesome. So that's what I do. And I started a show called Curve the Cube. And how Kev did you do that? OK, so how I did it was I asked Kevin Ralston from the KVJ show, the host, if he would do my pilot episode for me. And he did. And we just sat in a room. I got some unbelievably cheap recorders, so I didn't know what I was doing at the time, and <laughs> recorded an episode just talking to him. And I hit the 100 episode mark the other day. But I don't mean to embarrass Darius. I think you guys are going to be a lot more interested in some of the content from episode 75. So what we do is we pair them with a one-on-one -on -one mentor in the community, an educated, older individual. <clears throat> and these are individuals that come from all walks of life, uh, whether it be business owners, artists, uh, designers, uh, 
I have an individual that works at a construction company, uh, individuals who, uh, whatever it may be, these are volunteers, these are passionate individuals that have been impacted by autism in some way, mm -hmm. or they're just looking to expand their information and knowledge about it. Like I said, I interview pretty cool people, right? So, <laughs> that is what I do, and it's become what I want to do for the rest of my life. To Darius? Yeah, podcasting. Oh, podcasting. Sure. You're welcome, you're welcome. So my goal now is to become not only much more in tune with digital marketing and social media and all that that I still love, become the podcast girl of, of uh, Palm Beach County. That's my goal. So I have Kirk the Cube. I have the Flintstone Media Podcast Network, by the way. I am the organizer for the Palm Beach Podcasters Meetup Group. And I even have another podcast that's just started as well called Eggheads After Hours where my techie friends and I get, around, get together and we talk about tech in our community. So it's a lot of fun. Inclusion, my point is, do what you love. You may not find it right away. Really explore what you're passionate about. Um, it can be an ex a discovery process about yourself as much as anything else. So discover what you really, truly love to do and then figure out a way to do it. Put one foot in front of the other and just start walking. It could be part-time, full-time, just a hobby, but you have to do something you love. Continue to feed your soul and you'll be a happier person. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You have successfully curved the cube. Thank you guys for listening to the 105th episode of the Curve the Cube podcast. It was a solo cast with your host, me, Jenny, and I talked about the story of how I got here, my journey through um, my career and my, my previous career into marketing and, and podcasting and all of that. So I hope it was a, a good time for you. It was a wonderful opportunity for me to present at uh, FAU's um, Career Day for their Centers for Autism and Related Disabilities. And it was, it was just such an honor to be there and be invited. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the presentation clip as well. Um, and I ask you to please um, follow Curve the Cube. Please subscribe on iTunes and follow us all over social media. We're everywhere, really, people. <laughs> so we're not hard to find. So this episode was sponsored by my brother, Gerard. He has his own company. Um, speaking of pursuing something that you want to do independently and that you love. He has his own company called GLS Bar Consulting. He is a brilliant brilliant lawyer and he gives sound legal business advice he's been to some of the top schools in the in the country in the world um you may have heard of them harvard and columbia and he's worked with some of the most prestigious law firms now as independent he's working with clients in a variety of industries from financial services through agriculture fashion and technology music production all of that and he's happy to bring all of that expertise to working with you and what's great about him is um you know i'm a little bit partial because he is my brother but he cares he really truly cares so he won't just treat you as a client but as a valued valued friend so reach out to him for business consultation legal consultation he also does um, fantastic escrow work so you can reach out to him at 786 531 9834 or email him at gerard at g-l-e-s-q consulting.com or find him on his facebook page jl esquire consulting he is not hard to find <laughs> i'm sure i've retweeted him multiple times so if you can't find him through him you can definitely find him through me <laughs> and my social media and thank you to gj john hitta for the music bed that you are listening to as you are listening to this and that's it so thank you so much for listening to the 105th episode of the curve the cube podcast which is the story all about how i got here love y'all